throughout the Bible with multiple. All right, man, we back with it. We back with it, man. We we back with another tree top TED talk. So this particular video. I'm going to be explaining what's happening, what was going on, or my interpretation of what I believe is going on with this uh, solar eclipse. So in this video, we're going to be looking at um, some Bible scriptures, basically some prophetic Bible scriptures that have been prophesizing about this particular solar eclipse that's going to be happening tomorrow um, in the southern part of America. And we will see this part on the east coast, but only at 87%. And I think we're only going to, we're going to see it around 245 and not um, earlier part of the day like the rest of the people. So with the solar, with the solar eclipse happening, um, it's, it's getting um, biblical for a lot of uh, Christian believers, um, but because this is what they consider a blood moon, and so in this blood moon is it's, it's like a it's like a warning, and I and I've said this previously in um, another video that this particular eclipse is, is more so like a warning for the world about God's imminent return, right? And so if you look at what's happening today. Uh, when the Passover, it, the Passover that's coming up, um, the Jews are going to be uh, sacrificing a red heifer. I ain't talking about no 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 lady of the streets. I'm talking about a red cow. They call them a heifer. Now in this heifer, they're going to be um, sacrificing it. So that they could, uh, you know, build this temple. Now, what's interesting about this is that this is it goes against totally, totally it goes against what God wanted because He died. He was the sacrifice for the children of Israel. He was their sacrifice. With Him being their sacrifice, they do not need to do this sacrifice of this red heifer that they're doing. And so this is getting kind of biblical. And so then you following the expulsion of Jews from Spain by King Ferdinand in 1492. This event led Christopher Columbus, himself of Jewish heritage, to embark on his historic voyage, ultimately resulting in the discovery of America, providing a new home for persecuted Jews. Moreover, a significant tetrad appeared in 1949 to 1948, May 4th, Israel birthday. Day before mine. 1950, that's the first one. Jewish Passover, April 13th, 1949. Dead Sea Scrolls found in 1949, January. July 20th, 1949, Israel War. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 things. 1949, October, the Feast of Tabernacle, the second eclipse. 1950, Jewish Passover, April 2nd, another eclipse. And Feast of Tabernacle. 1950 September so they had two eclipses that year and every and it's all surrounded around God's um, different feasts as an independent state after its destruction in 70 AD another tetrad occurred in 1967 to 68 following the historic six-day war for the first time in two millennia, Jerusalem was reinstated as the capital of Israel, marking a monumental victory and fulfillment of biblical prophecy. In 2014 to 15, mm. another tetrad took place, accompanied by a solar eclipse in its midst. Solar eclipses are regarded as warnings for the non-Jewish world, with some interpreting them as harbingers of impending conflict. This period coincided with significant geopolitical events, including President Trump's rise to power and potential tensions in Sudan. <clears throat> the most recent blood moon, not part of a tetrad, 
occurred during the midterm election in the United States on November 8, 2022. Oh. This celestial event stirred apocalyptic imagery, evoking a sense of dread among humanity as described in biblical prophecies. These celestial phenomena serve as potent reminders of divine warnings and the imminent day of reckoning. As mankind witnesses these signs, it profoundly recognizes the impending judgment and the need to seek refuge from the wrath to come. The echoes of revelation reverberate as the kings, great men, and people of all walks of life seek refuge from the impending wrath. The realization dawns that the great day of reckoning foretold in ancient prophecy is fast approaching. Visible on the surface. Sometimes you have to go underground to find the ulterior motive and uncover the truth. And could the truth actually be linked Excuse to me. the spiritual Thank world? You. Let's start digging and find out. In 1951, a group of scientists got together in order to have an international the CERN project. Now, the CERN project it, is uh, a group of scientists and stretch the limits of technology in and uh, the Geneva that area who created like this European magnetic force field, not a magnetic force field, but like this magnetic beam CERN. to shoot in, and into space um, so that they can the find a God they particle. Well, they already found a God beam. particle, but they're trying and to see the what symbol, created this mm -hmm. God particle. Okay, we'll go and this God particle that they found a, a while back is supposed to be how the world was created. It looks like now, I have a story of my own, which is relatable to the CERN project. I know a lot of people don't believe me when I tell people this. And a lot of people don't even pay attention to what I say. Said, it like, it but like when I was living in Los Angeles, California, I was working with this company. It was a a, a catering company, temporary. Um, they put you in little spots, so you was like a temp. So I had this one particular job at Northern Group NASA in uh, Los Angeles, California, and we were catering this event. Now, in this particular event that I was catering. It had a like um, it was bankers in there, like the the CEOs of the banks. It was PNC. Oh, oh, it was Bank of America. It was um, 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 JF Morgan. What is it? JP Morgan, JP Morgan, and Fannie Mae. Now these were donors to NASA to create this telescope called the Robert Lee Telescope or something like that. And in this meeting, they were talking about putting this telescope between the sun and the earth. But they they had to wait for a particular time to do it, right? Now, I wasn't really understanding why they had to wait to do this, but they had to wait to do this. So they needed these donors to help them, you know, configure this telescope or whatever the case might be so that they could see to the beginning of time basically that's basically what they was doing and so this CERN project they're going to be um, they're going to be um, turning it on uh, when the eclipse happens then that is is um, important because the people in NASA said they had to wait to put this to put this um to put this telescope between the earth and the sun and they had to wait because they had to wait for the eclipse so come on so these people are out here uh creating vortexes creating portals to the alternate universe and they don't know how to close it they don't know what they're letting in and that's why people who are uh you know in these religions, especially Christianity, Christians believe that this is the end of times and everything is prophetic. Everything that we know is to be, to be true has already been said to us, not only in the Bible, but in the Torah as well as the Quran. OK, so my thing for people is y'all need to be aware, y'all need to be vigilant and y'all need to be praying to God 
every day, all day. Y'all need to be giving your lives back to Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm sorry, back to God. You know what I mean? So, but y'all check this out. We're going to wake it up. Dance of Destruction. The statue welcomes visitors to the CERN laboratories to this day. Inscribed on the dedication plaque is a quote from physicist Fritjof Capra stating, every subatomic particle not only does an energy dance, but is also an energy dance, a pulsating process of creation and destruction without end. For the modern physicist then, Shiva's dance is the dance of subatomic matter. Why did they include this strange link between science and the spiritual world? What exactly is CERN doing? Of course, we know the mission behind CERN is to uncover what the universe is made of and how it works, but